And I just want to talk about a couple of reasons why I believe voting is a very foolish method of uh, choosing who is going to be an authority. You know, number one, when you vote in authority, the authority is no longer the authority. Because if you vote, then the majority is the authority. You know what I mean? This is why, uh, you know, we have democratic societies because they don't want the politicians ruling, even though that's what they end up doing. Um, they're meant to be representing the population. So, you know, in Australia we have a, a democracy. So, you know, the authority is with the majority because that's what's meant to be, uh, you know, running the country and the, and the politicians are meant to be representing us. But, you know, this is the problem with democracy because the problem with democracy is its rule of the 51%. So the 49% just get ruled uh, by the 51%. And this is why it, democracy, you know, we, in Australia we talk about how great democracy is and, oh, you know, we have a, this great government and this great democracy in Australia. But what happens when you're in the 49%? Right? You know, now as Christians, we're in the 49%. And now what's happening? You have, you know, gay marriage, you have... Uh, all the things that are happening in, in Australia and there's nothing we can do to stop it even though we hold the right positions and the moral positions but morality is just going to change with society because that's the problem with democracy. It's rule of the 51% over the 49%. And you know those in the 51% they love democracy. You know people that are in the 51% they love democracy. It's only once they're in the 49% that they realize democracy is not the perfect system that it should be. And you know, this is why as God's people, we should not, you know, we should not, you know, promote and be for ideologies that are contrary to the Bible. Because, you know, you don't see democracy in the Bible. You don't see, de God didn't set up democracy in the Old Testament. He gave the law and then he gave judges and he appointed judges to judge using that perfect law of God. You know, not, not man-made law and definitely not law that is decided by 51% of the people. You know, when I went to America, they, they would always say, because they're, uh, what is it, a republic or something like that. I can't remember what they're called, their, their way of politics. You know, but they would always, you know, say, because I was from Australia, they'd say, oh, you know, democracy doesn't work. They would describe democracy as, you know, two wolves and a sheep deciding what's for dinner. Um, that's what they would say about democracy. And one of my friends, one of my friends in Phoenix, his name was Chris, he would always say, you know what democracy is? Democra gang rape, he'd say, is democracy in action. That's, uh, that's how bad that they thought about democracy. So democracy is, is, uh, is not a perfect system. And you know, why, why would it be logical that the sheep would choose their own shepherd? I mean, if the shepherd is there to look after the sheep, then obviously the sheep are not in a position to choose who their shepherd is. Um, there would be a bit of a bias there. Let's turn to, to Matthew 7, verse 13. Because why biblically is it um, not wise to go with a majority vote? Uh, look at what it says here in Matthew 7. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So this verse is obviously talking about salvation, saying, hey, you know, many will try to, will enter in through the wide gate and it will go through just to destruction. But few are going to find that straight and narrow gate, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, that was one thing I found in my own life. You know, I, I used to go to a Presbyterian church and I already thought the way was narrow at the, that Presbyterian church. Because I was thinking, you know what, you know, we, it's a, it was a pretty fundamental church. They, they took a stand for the King James Bible. And even on that issue alone, that's already... Uh, you know, a, a narrow path in a sense. But then when I learned what salvation was, that it was only believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that it wasn't turn from your sins, it wasn't keep the commandments, it wasn't what a lot of people say, you know, give your life to Jesus, commit your life to Jesus. It was simply trusting Jesus Christ, receiving him as your savior, you know, not as your Lord, because that's works as well. But I realized how narrow that way actually is. And even amongst churches that are like ours in Sydney and in Australia, you I don't, for you guys that have the right positions, you're starting to realize how narrow that gate really is. So in terms of salvation, you know, the majority are generally wrong. So when it comes to the word, why would we assume then that the majority would be right? So it would be foolish 
um, to go with the majority when the majority are usually wrong. And you know, it's the same with a, with a board of elders, you know, even a board of deacons or you know, any board, any, anything that requires uh, a group of people to come to a consensus because the majority is normally wrong. It's hard to come to that consensus and, and generally it'll go astray because it's more likely that somebody in that group will be off and will we'll stop that progress from going forward. That's why God gives that authority and that charge to the individual um, because there, there will always be one man willing to take a stand. <clears throat> And you know, appealing to authority is always a bad argument as well. And we should, we should never do that. And sometimes we do that just unwillingly, right? Because sometimes we'll be talking to somebody and we'll make statements like, oh, nobody believes that. But that's a bad argument because it doesn't matter if nobody believes it because if it's in the word of God, who cares how many people believe it? And you know, often people would tell me that. I remember arguing with somebody, you know, in a independent church for my stand on the King James Bible. And I was saying, you know, I believe the King James Bible is perfect. I believe that it's the perfect word of God and it's a perfect translation. And they said to me, yeah, well, but no, no pastor, no bishop believes that. And I just said, well, I don't care if nobody believes it. Like if nobody believes it, that doesn't make it wrong. And I'm going to believe it even if nobody believes it because I'm going to take a stand for what I believe is right. Um, I'm not going to go with the majority. And, and you know, arguing from the majority, it, it, you know, is always wrong. Um, you know, even yesterday, you know, the Muslim lady that I spoke to would say, oh, you look, look how many millions of people are converting to Islam. And uh, you know, I would question that because a lot of people think that Islam is just growing so fast because they're having children. Because unfortunately, you know, the Christian world is not having children. They're having one or two kids and the population is slowly dying. Whereas, you know, when you see Muslims in the shopping center, they're having three, four, five. Well, of course, after a couple of generations, they're gonna take over that suburb because, you know, eventually the people that believe the truth are gonna die off and, and what's left are the people that don't. So that's why we don't go with the majority. And a couple of other things, you know, if you can be voted in, you can be voted out. You know, if you can be voted in into authority, they, they can just vote you out. And also, you know, if the majority is the authority, there's a temptation to be a people pleaser, right? Because if the majority are going to vote you in, if you lose that authority, that's why politicians, they're always playing the people because they need that popular vote. Whereas if authority comes top down from godly people that don't care what the people think, then there will be, I guess, a righteous spiritual lineage in a sense of people ordaining and putting people in authority that meet those qualifications. You know, when I was in the Presbyterian church, it was really funny around election time because every three years they would have an election to decide who was going to be the next bishops and elders and deacons. So every three years there was the campaign trail, right? There was the, you know, the, the families would go and then they'd have dinner with you and they'd be on their best behavior because in a couple of weeks you're going to cast your vote in that meeting to decide who um, is going to be um, the next, you know, pastor, assistant pastor, elder and deacon. But you know what was really funny? I just want to share this story with you because in that church, in order to be a deacon, you just needed majority votes. So you just needed 50% of the people to say yes to your name. Then you would be appointed as a deacon. But to be appointed as an elder or an, an assistant pastor or a pastor, you had to get two thirds majority vote, right? And the funny thing that happened there is because the church was divided on who should be the pastor and who shouldn't be the pastor, there was a bit of a split going on at the time, that none of the pastors, the, the previous pastors, and none of the assistant pastors and none of the elders got re-elected. Re because even though they had majority, they had like 50 something percent of the votes, they didn't have two thirds of the vote and only one deacon got voted in. Now what a foolish scenario a church can get themselves in is if you have voting and you have two thirds majority vote where you had a bishop looking after the church, you had an assistant bishop, you had, a, uh, had deacons looking after the church, and then after your election you have no pastors, no bishops, you have one deacon looking after the church. I just thought that was funny. So that's why we don't do votes here, because you know, not only is it a foolish way of making decisions, but because you know, the majority is not accountable. I've already sort of covered this, but you, know, you are not accountable to how this church is run. I'm going to be accountable. This is why the boss at works the boss at work makes decisions and has authority at work because he is accountable to his boss for the budget or for the numbers or whatever. It's the same in this church because I'm accountable to God of how this church here is run 
why would I then pass that authority over to somebody else? And that's another reason why the man is the head of the house, is because the man is accountable to God for his family. So God gives the man authority to run that house because he ultimately is accountable for his house.